All right, guys. So welcome to this uh, brand new feature known as MT Project Reacts. So for the first video, we're going to be showing you guys introducing the proposed IBX. Uh, this video was published today by the MTA. Uh, it's about four minutes in total. I made two parts where I physically go outside and I show you guys the various locations in which you could see this track that will be proposed for this line i don't want to speak that much i'm going to show you guys this video and uh just to just know that i will be pausing in certain portions so if anything let's uh let's show it when the new york city subways were built they were primarily designed to bring people into and out of manhattan the subway connected densely populated manhattan to the outer boroughs which helped fuel the growth within the newly consolidated new york city when the subway opened, Manhattan's population was bigger than Brooklyn and Queens combined. Today, Brooklyn and Queens residents outnumber Manhattanites three to one. So there you go. Look at that. Um, I was surprised by that statistic. I would have thought there was lots of people living in Manhattan. But as you guys know, um, because of the pandemic, you'll have to realize that it's also one of the many reasons why people have left Manhattan. The population for Brooklyn... 2,736,074 and for Queens 2,405,464 that is quite surprising and by looking at those statistics I should tell you right now that lots of people you know more than likely are going to be commuting by by transit to getting to either work or school or whatever they need to go to so by looking at that stat I should tell you right away that this project would be vital if it gets done Manhattan is still the center of New York City, but the incredible growth of Brooklyn and Queens, as well as the Bronx and Staten Island, means that travel within the city often doesn't involve Manhattan. Take traveling from Brooklyn to Queens. Unless you live near the G train or can connect to it, if you want to take the subway, you'll need to detour through Manhattan. That adds extra time to your... I mean, th that that is an interesting point that they brought up, but it also does depend where you live Specifically, if you live in Brooklyn and Queens, if you live near the F line, so the Culver section, like the Midwood section, or if you live in the McDonald Avenue section in Brooklyn, to get to the G, all you have to do is take the F down to church, and then there you'll find the G. But they are definitely right, because if you live somewhere like in Canarsie and you want to take the G, then that's going to be quite difficult. If you live in, I don't know, Red Hook in Brooklyn, my, that might, I'm sorry, that, that probably was a bad example, but if you live in Coney Island, so that's a good example. If you live in Coney Island and you want to take the G, it's going to be a challenge, but then again, you, you also have the F, but the fact that you want to have the direct connection. So I do see the example that they're bringing here, and the reason why they're showing this is because of how easier would it be um, once the IBX project gets into play. Because they, they are going to bring up a couple of examples here. Do it. If you want to take the subway, you'll need to detour through Manhattan. That adds extra time to your trip and more crowding on trains in the busiest part of the system. There has to be a better way, and there is. The Interborough Express is an idea for a new 14-mile transit service between Bay Ridge, Brooklyn, and Jackson Heights, Queens. The so as you guys notice, uh, great that they're using Google Earth on this video. So I remember when, they were, when I saw this part... The first time that I saw this video, I was like, wow, this is almost exactly what I was doing in that uh, Google Earth analysis for IBX in which I was doing. But what I found interesting is that they, they showed this and what they're, what they're about to talk about gets really interesting here. The IBX would bring passenger service back to the Bay Ridge branch, an underused freight rail corridor that is only used by a few freight trains per day. New York Atlantic Railway. This line hasn't carried passenger trains since 1924. The Interborough Express would connect 20... I was actually surprised with that statistic, 1924. I would have thought it was a little bit before that. I thought it was like 1904 or something like that, but 1924, wow, that's quite an interesting statistic. And what you saw in this um, portion of the video was um, the relapse of how the track looks right now at this moment. So I believe this part that you see on the screen here has to be around like the Flatlands area of Brooklyn because there used to be an abandoned station around here. Uh, but the thing is, I, I forgot what the name was. If anything, I, I, I would have remembered it off of the top of my head, 
but not this time. Used freight rail corridor that is only used by a few freight trains per day. This line hasn't carried passenger trains since 1924. The Interborough Express would connect 20 neighborhoods with up to 17 subway lines and the Long Island Railroad, providing a fast, direct, and affordable connection between Queens and Brooklyn. So check that out. This is how they show it in this video. But the purple line that you see, the lighter purple, because the, the darker purple is the seven line up there. But the light purple line that you see in the video, that is what would be the IBX. Now check this out, guys. If it gets done, like I say, you would connect the uh, the R, you would connect the the D, you would connect the N, the F, the B and Q, the two and five, the three, the A, C, and the J, the the M, and the L, and the seven. So mind you guys, all those connections within that one line, if this gets done. So let's say for example, um, you're at Middle Village, let's say you're either in Ridgewood or Middle Village, and you want to go to, let's say, Canarsie, because you have a friend down there in Canarsie. Regularly, what you would have to do, let's say you live in Middle Village, you would have to take the M all the way down, get off at Myrtle Avenue, either Wyckoff or Broadway. Again, I forget what stop that is. Transfer to the L, and then from there, you go to Canarsie. But with this IBX, all you would have to simply do is take the train, the IPX at Middle Village, and go all the way down to Canarsie, and that's it. Very, very good. Another good example would be if you live on the 3. So let's say you get on, let's say that stop is Sutter Avenue, right? You go there, and let's say you have to go to, let's say somewhere on the F, right? And you have to get, go from Sutter Avenue. You would have to take the three all the way down to Atlantic and then take the D or whatever and then you'll you'll find yourself there. On the IBX, what you simply have to do is take the stop on the three where you see it. Again, something something telling you is that it's either New Lots or Sutter. You take the train there, go all the way down, you get off at what would be I guess McDowell Avenue on the F. You get off there and boom, there you go. So it'll be a, a easier path and it saves lots of time um the only thing is we don't know what would be the the total fare for this line end to end trip times on ibx would take between 39 and 45 minutes a subway trip that takes almost an hour today could take only 20 minutes on the, the ibx so check that out 58 minutes on a regular basis let's say you have to go on the subway they they showed this example that is 74 street broadway on 7 to middle village Look at that huge loop you have to do just to get to another part of Queens, which is quite shocking to me. Even though, yes, Middle Village and, well, what is that, uh, 74th Street Broadway, th those are two different parts of Queens. In terms of distance, they're quite far apart, I would say. Look how long it would take, 58 minutes. But with the, this proposed line, it'll be 20 minutes. That is stunning. That's almost half the time it would take to go on, on the line or a route that requires four different subways could instead take just 30 minutes with no transfers. So this is a great example because let's say for, let's say someone is either Wilson Avenue or uh, Bushwick Aberdeen Street on the L and they, and they have to get to, I don't know, Avenue J or Avenue M. Look at all what you have to do. First of all, you have to go on the L, then go on the C, and then take uh, get off at Franklin, take the shuttle, and then wait for the queue at Prospect, and then go all the way down to Prospect Park. Look how long that would take. That would take a very long time. But with this proposed plan, look look how long it would only take using this. Because they did propose to stop at Wilson, Wilson Avenue. You take it there, you go all the way down, and you got off at, let's say it's Avenue H to stop that deal deal. You get off at Avenue H, and boom, there you go. So, like I said, for those that live in that part of Brooklyn, Canarsie, that specific part, Bushwick, I believe that's Bushwick, Wilson Avenue. If this line gets proposed, well, sorry, proposed. If this line gets created and it's done, I'm telling you right now, it will benefit people that live down there. Especially if you want to go to the middle area of Brooklyn, like what is Avenue J. And neighborhoods far from the subway altogether would have new connections to all of New York City. So... 
you got one, two, three, four, five, six. Wait, one, two, three, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. We have over fourteen to fifteen different neighborhoods that would benefit with this uh, IBX line. The only thing is, there isn't going to be a connection between Manhattan and the Bronx. So I don't know what's going to happen within those two boroughs. The only thing I'm saying is IBX is probably going to be only for Brooklyn and Queens. It sucks that they can't include Manhattan and the Bronx. Because if anything, Manhattan and the Bronx do deserve a link. Because I'm telling you right now, people that live in the Bronx would have to... Let's say you live like around the 6th, that, that portion of the Bronx. And you have to get to Manhattan. I'm not saying that it's a hassle to go from the Bronx to Manhattan. But I can tell you right now that there's people saying, hey, why isn't there a link that could connect from, from, from Bronx to Manhattan in a faster basis? Oh, why can't you extend the three train to the Bronx? Uh, a lot of a lot of viewers typically that live in both Manhattan and the Bronx really, really want to see an extension like this. But the reason why we have here in Brooklyn, why we have an advantage and why this was easily proposed was because there was, an, there was already an existing track. Even though it's not in use because it's used by the um, New York New York and Atlantic Railway. So it's used by them in a way, but even though they don't use it all the time, that track still pertained to the MTA because years back, the Barry's Branch at Light of Lar, that used to be the Barry's Branch at Light of Lar. And that track used to be in use. But at the moment right now, there's just one track, one track in use. Now, if we're looking to extend service, let's say frequent service, Trains running every 10 minutes to 15. What you want to do, obviously, is build another track. But if you guys notice, in the two videos that I did going out there, showing you guys the track in real life, you did see that, especially in part two, there are specific points where it gets too narrow and the track path gets too tight where it's like you don't have enough room to put that second track. So, and, and if you refer to the feasibility study, which I also made a video to that, if you also refer to that video, you also see that there is lots of engineering challenges that will be seen if this were to be done. But like I said, the fact that it will benefit all these neighborhoods and the fact that it would benefit, let's say that, that ride that you showed here, that they showed here, Wilson Avenue to Avenue J. Look how long it would take to come here. It, that, that usually takes like about like 50 to, to one hour to just get to Wilson Avenue to Avenue J. But with this line, just 30 minutes. Like they say, it cuts half of the ride if this line gets proposed. So it's, it's just something that I find incredible. Over 900,000 people live within a half mile of the IBX route. And some Me? of the fastest growing neighborhoods in the city. Most commuting trips in these neighborhoods don't start or end in Manhattan, but within Brooklyn and Queens. The MTA studied a number of different possible modes of transportation for the IBX and found that three were feasible, conventional rail, light rail transit, and bus rapid transit. Now, that's that's something interesting that I saw in this video too. And it's the fact that bus rapid transit fell within the top three. Because from, from what I remember in the, in the feasibility study, they said that out of all the options that existed, there was about like five to six options, the, the the one that was rarely going to be chosen by the MTA would be bus rapid transit, but the fact that it's in the top three. Now, this is your top three. You got conventional rail, which is on your far left. You got light rail in the middle, and you have bus rapid transit. For me, I'll tell you right now, conventional rail is the best way to put it. Why? Because we already have history that there was a railroad running through that through that track right now. Or what or that used to run on that track so the fact that conventional rail is on the as on the options here it should it should be chosen light rail I would disagree on that because first of all for light rail you would have to add more technology you would have to really have a good infrastructure network within the corridor so not only is that gonna be not only is that gonna waste a lot of money but also time building all this and bus, bus rapid transit they they said that unfortunately it would not bring the best of ridership so that's why lots of people were saying no no to bus rapid transit but in terms of the three lots of people are saying conventional rail conventional rail would feature two dedicated passenger rail tracks running alongside the existing freight line 
trained cars would be similar to those used on Long Island Railroad and Metro North, but with more doors for faster boarding and more standing room, like you'd find on subway cars. Conventional rail would run below street level at subway-like frequencies. Its average runtime would be about 45 minutes end to end. So, you're noticing that in this part, we see a double track. And this is conventional rail. There it says 45 minutes end to end. And you can slightly see it, but it says 85,000 weekday riders. So they are saying that it's going to be double track. So check this out. If we're already seeing it in this, this sort of demonstration, uh, you see double track, that you see is high platforms, and that you see conventional rail right there. But that's because this is the option. They're going to show the other two options as well. And it would serve a projected 85,000 weekday riders. Light rail transit would use a two-track line running either above or alongside the existing freight tracks. Smaller than subway cars, light rail uses trams that can operate on dedicated tracks and the street. Light rail has the highest projected ridership of the three options at about 88,000 per weekday and would have the shortest runtime at 39 minutes. Bus Rapid Transit uses buses on a dedicated bus-only road, separate from traffic except at crossings, that would run alongside or above freight rail lines. Bus Rapid Transit has the lowest projected ridership at about 74,000 people per weekday and would have a lower passenger capacity than other options, but it would be the most flexible, allowing other bus routes to use parts of the corridor. All three options feature electric vehicles and modern technology to make them cleaner, quieter, and less disruptive. And all right, so they are thinking about the environment after all, where they refer to the big three. Cleaner, quieter, less disruptive. That's obviously what everyone would want, especially if it's a modernistic line that they're going to create. But you guys did see those um, three different options, conventional rail, right, light rail, and bus rapid transit. Out of the three, the downfall for ridership would be um, bus rapid transit. And as... and. I, and in a, in a way, bus rapid transit will be a little bit faster because instead of the 45 on conventional rail and uh, what is light rail, for bus rapid transit, it would just be 40. And they also said that for the BRT, bus rapid transit, that they would also make sure to add existing lines so that it could serve as connections, which is good. But, la but the problem for me for BRT is that they would have to implement and create specific roads for this network. And like I said, that's that's going to be annoying and people are going to say no to that so that is why lots of people even in the comment section in this video are saying conventional rail just of the fact that the existing rail is already there so at this point cut off brt and then stick to the two that you see here either the light rail or the conventional rail growth to the surrounding communities so what's next the MTA is still in the early phases of the project and is beginning the environmental review process. If the MTA moves forward with IBX, station locations will need to be identified. After that, the plan will undergo further design and then construction. But we can't do this without you. We'll need your feedback throughout the process. What do you think about the IBX? You can let us know in the comments or keep in touch by visiting the IBX website. So that about does it with this video showing you guys once again in four minutes introducing the proposed ibx and by the way tomorrow because this video will be posted today there is going to be a virtual a virtual meeting i guess where they're going to be not only introducing the line but also taking questions from people out there and this is going to be either on zoom or whatever i would i would actually love to join it but if not then i'll just record it and show you to you guys on the channel because if anything once those hearings or whatever get shown they're not going to post it unless they do but what i want to do is i want to record it and show you guys so they've went through lots of stuff in this video great to know like i said environmental review they're going through that design construction but like i said guys the examples that they show in this video like the g where you have circumstances where you can't reach it and so it becomes a big problem and that definitely stinks. They showed this other comparison, like like what I showed you, with the M. I I still think it's stunning that it takes 58 minutes to go from 74th Street to Middle Village. To me, I find that stunning. But um, the worst one yet is this one. 30 minutes. That's IBX. But when we refer to real life, like I said, Wilson to Avenue J, 
That's a long time. And the fact that you have to do three, one, two, yeah, three different transfers just to get to another part of Brooklyn. And it takes almost an hour to get to another part of Brooklyn in transit. Not on car, but on transit. It's it's insane. And obviously people in tomorrow's event, they're going to want to, you know, ask a lot of questions. Not only the fact that we're interested in it, but we want to see how it's going to be done. Um, either the three options, what is the MTA going to choose? Um, is the service going to be consistent? What is going to... I think within this event, a lot of people are going to be asking about the fare. Because fare still tends to be a problem. But since this is an IBX route, and since this is, I guess, in a way, an express line, more of like a railroad... I think the fare is probably going to be over 275 but then again, like I said, the people who call in the shots is the MTA at the end. So like I said, to wrap it up, for those 900,000 people that live within the IBX, we're going to benefit by it. We're going to benefit by it, and it's definitely good to know. But like I said, for those that don't, and let's say, for example, live in Staten Island, then that's unfortunate. But like I said, for the IBX, they're saying that it's going to hopefully get into works within three to five years i'm just giving an estimate and by i would say i don't know 2031 2032 this gets done hopefully we can see it but i could assure you right now people in staten island bronx and manhattan they're gonna say hey if if they did it in manhattan brooklyn why can't we get it i'm, I'm pretty sure right now that the mta wants to do something where it could link up those boroughs that i just mentioned but it's gonna be complicated and I'll, I'll tell you right now, it's going to consist of lot, lot, a lot of planning because that's what it's all about. But like I said, the first time that I saw this proposal, I was like, you know, this is going to be absolutely amazing. It's going to benefit lots of people. I'm going to be really excited about it. But like I said, Convention Rail is going to be number one. That's going to be the number one choice for me at the MTA of Globe. Convention Rail, um, possibly, let's say instead of putting third rail you could also try with um the emus or battery packed trains where instead of having third rail you can have battery power trains but the only downfall to that is let's say you lose power on those trains and what now so i guess the standard more than likely will be third rail if the stations look like this great but the other thing once again would be accessibility so there's going to be lots of questions so at the end, like I said, this is my reaction to this four-minute video. It's crazy how a reaction of a four-minute video will end up to be about 26 minutes, which is how long this is going to be. But like I said, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, tomorrow, there will be, like I said, an event on the MTA where there's going to be um, people asking questions regarding this line. So with that in mind, that does it. Thanks for watching.